Hi, I'm Will from Venture to Rome, and today I'm going to give you my first impressions of the lightest rooftop tent I've ever seen, which also happens to be pretty affordable for a rooftop tent. All right, this box that I'm laying on top of right now is from a company called Inspired Overland, and in it is a rooftop tent that only weighs 87 pounds. Let's check it out. Okay, before I open up this tent and show you what's inside, I want to say just a little bit about inspired Overland as a company. So they are a startup, they're brand new. They started in 2022. And in that year, this tent design won an award at SEMA. Then the following year, 2023, they won another award at SEMA for their carbon fiber hard shell design, which looks really, really cool. I think it's coming out in April this year or something. So if I can get my hands on one of those, I'll be really, really excited as well. Now, the thing that makes them a little bit different as a company is that they really control and own their manufacturing process overseas. So they're a US based company, but they manufacture overseas, but they own and control that process. So they can come up with more innovative designs. They can iterate faster on those designs and get things to market faster than maybe some other company. It's very similar to another tent company that I really like, Intrepid Camp Gear, that's doing some really innovative stuff and they own their manufacturing process as well. In fact, I'm running their Geo 2.5 rooftop tent on my truck right now. Link in the description if you wanna see what that's all about. Okay, let's open it up. So you can see it comes with this cardboard layer to kind of keep it protected. And then we have, voila, this rooftop tent. Now, here's what makes this tent different and special. This is a clamshell design. So it pops up, you know, like your normal kind of clamshell wedge tent, but it's not a hard shell. It's got a soft top to it. So this is like that kind of soft top, maybe PVC type. Uh, canvas. I'm not exactly sure what it's called. I'm sure the folks over at Inspired know exactly what it's called, but um, but it's it's not aluminum. It's not metal. It's not plastic. It's canvas, which is one of the reasons they save a ton of weight. So another thing that you're going to see here is that it doesn't have latches because it's it's a soft shell. It has a zipper. So it has a zipper that goes all the way around it, and that's how it pops out. So let's pop this thing up and see how it works. All the way down the side here, and now it's open. Okay, so let's see it. Oh yeah. I mean, those two gas struts really just pop it right up. It does, the, the lid to it does feel like just super light, I guess is the word for it. It's just really light. Let's take a look at what's going on around the outside of this tent. Okay, one of the first things I wanna show you are the vents, which are pretty cool. So there's one vent here, there's another vent on the other side of the tent, and there's one here in the front. And the way these work is they Velcro out, and then there's like this stick or pole that also has Velcro on it. And you just Velcro it right there, and what it does is it holds it out away from the canvas so you get more airflow coming up and into the tent, and it shields it from any precip coming down, which I think is really cool. The one thing I think is, you know, you have to keep in mind is that you can't open this from the inside of the tent. So if you want to open the vents, you need to unzip the front door and, or the side door and kind of reach out here and, and put that in place, which is not that big of a deal, to be honest, but it's just something to keep in mind. But these vents are really, really great. They're also in the Intrepid Geo 2.5 and I love them. Okay, the next thing I want to show you that I think is really cool and something very different is this, the roof. So normally you have a hard shell right? So you've got this soft material, but underneath it, you also don't have a hard shell. So this is like, it's almost like it's hollow underneath. There's framing that comes across. There's like three cross beams. So let's say five cross beams, because there's one at top and bottom. It does not feel like any rooftop tent lid I've ever opened before. All right, now let's take a look at this soft material, the soft top material. It feels durable. It's I don't know what it's called. I want to call it like PVC. It reminds me of the soft shell that was on my Smitty built uh, soft shell rooftop tent, the, the kind of fold out versions of my very, very first tent. And that thing held up for years and hundreds of nights um, and didn't have any problems, any rips in it that I could tell. But it's a lot different than having a hard shell. But I think that the weight savings might be worth it depending on your setup. So because this is light, and you don't have like, you know, super heavy struts in there, this, this can close and open pretty easily. So you can imagine like in a wind storm, this might move around a little bit or, you know, unlike others because the, because the lid is so 
light, I can imagine like the wind pushing this around a little bit. So what they do to compensate for that is they give you these, these poles here that give you extra support. So this basically goes up, there's a little bracket for it there. You twist it into place and now, and there's one on each side. So now you've created that rigidity that you want so that thing's not gonna close in a windstorm. And I think that's really clever because this is just an aluminum pole, so it doesn't add much weight, but it gives you the rigidity you need to. There are probably lots of scenarios where you wouldn't need to put this up if it's calm weather, um, but if there was something happening outside, you, you can feel comfortable knowing that you can give yourself a little more support for that, uh, for that really light roof if you needed it. Okay, so I was, trying to, I was trying to figure out how to film this next thing, like how to light it, because it's kind of dark on this side. And I realized this tent is so light, I can just turn it easily to face the light. Look, look at this. This thing is 87 pounds. It's on a wooden crate. And I can move it so easily. I've never, never had a rooftop tent that was as easy to move as this. So that just speaks to like how light this thing is. I mean, look at this. It's, it's so light. It's crazy. I could never do that with any of my other rooftop tents. Nuts. Let's see what's inside. Okay, you can see I put both the supports up just to give it a little more strength when I'm in there crawling around. Let's open up this front door. First, this canvas is actually really thick. It feels like thick canvas. So I don't know exactly what it is. I'll, I'll go find out what the actual weight of it is and the waterproofing, but um, it seems at first glance to be heavy stuff. Okay, we're gonna throw that over the top for now. Uh, screen, also pretty heavy screen. Throw that over the top. And yeah, it looks like a tent on the inside. It looks like a, a tent that's on the small side. Um, I'm 6'1", so I'll crawl in there and we'll see how I fit. But it does seem like it's not as big. It's certainly not as big as my other two tents. So the other two tents I run right now are a Roof, uh, Roof Nest Falcon Pro and an Intrepid Geo 2.5. And they are huge. Like they are big tents in terms of like their designs focus on giving you more space on the inside. This design focuses on shaving weight and space is going, you're going to sacrifice some space because of the materials that you're that they use in this design to save weight so um it looks it looks fine there's i have no problems with this other than i wonder about that angle down there like you know how far can i get my feet down there before they start getting wedged in so let's find out okay so the first thing i'm going to do before i get in there is open up these windows let's see how that works oh wow so this thing it's huge. Whoa. Look at that. Holy cow. So this completely opens up. There's actually a toggle here that stretches. Yeah, there's probably one here. Okay. Oh, yeah. Comes around and that should hold it up. Dude, that is super open. That has some real advantages, probably some disadvantages too. Um, but that was, that was unexpected on my end. Huh, really cool. Okay, let's get in there. Well, having those windows open certainly makes it easier to show the space in this thing. Okay, so first, this is your headroom. So I'm sitting, I'm 6'1", sitting down and we're reaching up to the top of the ceiling here. And it feels fine, like I'm on my knees, I can do that. You know, that, that feels like it's fine. I could change my clothes in here. It's not the most spacious, but it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel too small here where it's the tallest. Feels fine. Okay. And uh, let's see. Well, let's give it a go. All right, I have my shoes on, but yeah, there it is. Okay, so, so you see my feet are kind of touching the canvas. So how far do I have to go up? My feet don't touch, probably right there. And the good news is, you know, I still have a little bit of space. So I'm 6'1", and I would say I just fit in here. Let's see if I pull this screen down. Yes, yeah, so the screen kind of zip in here and my head might be pressing against the screen a little bit on my pillow, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, it's kind of like a headboard. So without my shoes, I would probably have a little bit more room. So I would say if you're six foot, six one or shorter, this is probably gonna be okay. If you're taller than six foot, you might be pushing, you might be squishing yourself in here a little bit. 
Okay, so let's take a look at the mattress. It's actually pretty dang comfortable, and I think I know why. So first, let's take a look at this. This is the this is the regular mattress. It's about an inch, inch and a half. I don't know if that's quite an inch and a half. That's probably like an inch and a quarter. Just eyeballing it. Maybe it's, I don't know, who, who cares? It's a pretty thin mattress, but it is high density foam. So sometimes um, companies say high density foam and it's not, it's like nothingness. It's like just, you know, just your regular kind of foam that you get from Home Depot or something. But this has actually got some density to it. So that's good. Okay, then under that, <clears throat> you've got your anti-condensation mattress um, or anti-condensation layer. And this thing has a little bit of sponge to it as well. So this actually has a good little, it's almost like a little mini box spring. So that's nice. That gives you a little extra comfort. And then probably the biggest reason this thing is comfortable is that this, this is your base plate and this is foam. And this is like very like rigid foam, like high density, but it does give. So it's almost like you've got like a four inch mattress in here, or at least a three inch mattress, because this is giving you like hard support. Then you've got a little bit of extra cush and then you've got like soft top, almost like a pillow topper on top. So you get all this going together. It's pretty dang comfortable in here. And then underneath is nothing. This is canvas and frame. There's no plastic under here. There's no plastic base. There's no aluminum base. It's just the tent that zips all the way around, which is good. Gives you another layer, like another R layer, because this thing is totally enclosed. But this is your, is like, it's your comfortable mattress. It's also your support for the floor. So when you're in here, you do kind of feel a little give between these, uh, su these support um, beams. And there's a lot of them. There's probably, I don't know, 10 or 15. There's quite a few on the, on the floor to give you, you know, good support, but, because there's no like rigid metal or plastic underneath here, you do feel it give a little bit. But to be honest with you, that matters when you're like on your knees, but I'm not sure it matters when you're like laying down. That's actually not bad for a rooftop tent mattress. I gotta say it's, you know, it's a trade-off, I suppose. More comfortable mattress, less stable floor. All right, let me talk a little bit about these windows because I think they are good and bad. So the cool thing is this thing opens up like no tent I've ever been in. It's just, you can open the whole thing. I mean, airing out your tent, give me a break. It's like huge. The, the problem is, or the trade-off is, is that you, since you don't have kind of a, a structured window here or a structured door on the side, if you just wanted to open it up part way, like if you don't want to open it up all the way, you kind of have to, fight with fabric a little bit. So like, you know, if I just wanted to open it up part of the way, well, I can, I can kind of do that, but not really because there's no, like, I can't like unzip this portion of it, you know, and still have it enclosed. You got to unzip the whole thing or zip the whole thing. So I think that is a trade-off. Um, it is an interesting trade-off because honestly the design, of having this thing wide open like that. There's, there's a lot of advantages to that, but I just want to be clear that, you know, it, it, it is going to, it takes a little bit more like fabric management, I think, than other tents. If you just wanted to open up, you know, this part. <laughs> okay. On the inside, you've got this nine pocket holder and then it has this design on the this canvas is just kind of loosely hanging, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. So, um, you know, what creates our value is air. And so, you know, the more air you have, the more insulation you can have as well. And so, you know, having some space here between the two layers of canvas is actually not a bad thing. Um, now you're losing a layer of aluminum or something like that, that also acts as insulation. So, you know, it is a trade-off, but, um, you know, I have this in the Intrepid Geo 2.0 and it insulates great. I mean, it stays warm and cool. I've had it in all the seasons and this style of kind of just having canvas hang down instead of having like a quilt that's kind of glued to the top. I don't know that it makes much difference in terms of um, losing insulation. I don't think you lose anything for it. Okay, so they also send you with these two tension rods. I'm guessing that connect to this 
as a rain fly or a awning sheet or something. Oh yeah, here there's little rivet holes there that it goes into. And then that goes there. And this one probably goes right here. Yes, indeed. Okay. And that's, hmm. Well, I'm not sure I would use this very much because I don't trust these. I feel like these tension rods are like a little too short. Like there's not quite enough tension on this thing. I feel like this is going to fall off. So if it took wind or something like that, I would be worried that it like wouldn't be stretched tight enough or if there was rain, it might pool. Yeah, you can see there's quite a lot of wobbliness. So I wonder about these. Maybe I don't have them in there right, but I feel like the tension rods should be just like a little bit longer with more tension on them than what they are now. But there's a chance that I don't actually have them in there right, but I think I do. Okay, so there's a few other things they send you you should know about. So there's a few other uh, pockets and things. So like uh, this thing is hanging towards the back of the tent um, and it's just three more pockets. It looks like that's removable, so you can take that off if you didn't like it. There are two shoe bags on either side of the tent, so that's nice. And these are attached, so you can't take them off, I don't think. No, they're sewn in. But the nice thing is, is that they roll up and then they just like buckle down right here. So if you don't use shoe bags, you don't have to use these. And I'm a person who doesn't use shoe bags. So this kind of stuff is a little bit lost on me, but it is all good canvas material. It's the same material as the tent. It seems to be really good. Um, they also send you a ladder in a nice ladder bag. And I love a good ladder bag. Like these are so important because when you're out in the weather and your ladder uh, is hanging up there on your tent and you've got all kinds of, I don't know, mud or dirt or dust or rain or snow or ice, all that stuff gets on the rungs of the ladder and then you track it in and out of your tent. And wherever you store your ladder after you pack up camp, all that stuff's going to go. So if you throw it up in the tent, it's gonna all be on the mattress. If you throw it in the back of your truck, it's gonna be in the truck bed. If you throw it in the back of your SUV or car or something, all that stuff's gonna get all over whatever's in your car. So the fact that they give you a nice, um, easy to, easy to um, pack bag for the ladder is really cool. So this ladder is a little different. It's your standard kind of telescoping ladder um, with this key difference. Let's see if I can do this here. Come on back, come on back. Right here. So this thing is how you attach it to the tent. You just kind of lean it on there and it stays secure from this instead of what we're used to seeing as the hooks. And the reason is there's no frame on this <laughs> to have hooks on it. So there's no external frame. There's no hard shell on the outside where you usually have those kind of little hook receivers. Um, this tent doesn't have it. So instead they just give you this, this thing. And as long as you are putting weight against this ladder, it should be secure. I, you know, it's just something I would kind of get in the habit of double checking when I got in and out of the tent and make sure that the ladder's okay. It is kind of nice to have them like kind of connected in or locked into those hook receivers. But, um, that's one important difference to know, but that's the trade-off for having a super light tent because there's no frame to attach this to. Okay. Other stuff that they send you is this huge bag full of installing components. And what I really like about this is that they're, they're starting to cater to different styles of mounting. And I wish more companies would do this. So here, here's a couple things I really like. One, they have two different styles of brackets. So they have these brackets, which are square and have kind of this padded thing. And um, that goes over a certain kind of rack. And they have these which are more curved, which go over a different kind of rack. So depending on the rack you have, they're kind of um, trying to make sure that you have what you need there. They give you a 13 millimeter wrench, ratcheting wrench, which is really handy to have. And then last thing, I don't know why I'm doing it down there. The bolts they give you are short. Now this is like, seems like a small deal, but it's a big deal. So this is a great size bolt for installing a rooftop tent because it's not too long. When it's long, what you have to do is get one of these nylock nuts 
and you've got to crank it on there with your ratchet, ratcheting wrench, right? And when it's a long bolt, it takes forever. And you're like reaching in between the top of your rig and the bottom of your tent, trying to squeeze your arm in some place and do this kind of like ratcheting thing. And it can take forever. It wears out your muscles. You can, I've nicked my hands. I mean, it's kind of a mess. So the fact that they give you shorter bolts, even though it seems really simple, is really great. It means they're thinking about what it's like to install these, this equipment on your rig. And they're thinking about designing things that solve those problems. So uh, I know it seems small, but kudos to, to these guys for having shorter bolts. And that's basically it. So what do I think about this tent? Well, first of all, I think Inspired Overland is trying to solve problems in the market in a really interesting way, which I like. They're trying to solve problems and they're trying to address value in their pricing. So this tent, I think if you go to the store and pick it up right now is like $1,200. If you have it shipped, I think it's like $1,550 or something like that. They decided to lower their prices in 2024 where other companies are actually raising their prices because shipping costs are going up. So that's cool. They're solving problems and they're trying to address value at the same time, which I find to be inspiring. So, so then when would you want a tent like this? Well, saving weight is a big deal. Um, if you are overlanding kind of long, you know, long form overlanding where you're mostly driving on kind of flat dirt roads and things, but traveling long distances, it does help with gas mileage. If you're doing rock landing or rock crawling, um, it really helps with uh, off camber situations because you're reducing the weight that's on top of your rig and lowering your center of gravity versus having another kind of rooftop tent. So my other two tents are 150 pounds and I think 180 or 190 pounds. So this is half the weight of my roof nest, which is a big deal. I mean, shaving off 90 pounds from the top of your uh, rig is a big deal. So that's, that's why you would want it, really for the weight. And there are trade-offs. There are trade-offs with some of like, you know, the kind of structural, I'm not gonna say integrity, but just kind of rigidity. Um, there might be some comfort trade-offs because it's not quite as big as other tents. But if you're looking to shave weight, I think it's a really interesting option at a really interesting price. So those are my initial thoughts on this tent. We're gonna take it out and test it and do different things with it. So we'll do a full review on how all this stuff holds up later in the year. But for now, this is what I think of the Inspired Overland tent. Until next time, I'm Wolf Adventure to Rome. Thanks for watching. So Lance, uh, we're testing out this new Inspired Overland super lightweight tent. What do you think so far? Uh, this tent was uh, purposely built specifically for me. Oh yeah, why is that? Uh, it's everything I want in a tent. It's ultra lightweight, it's minimal. The reason that we thought it was cool because it weighs like 76 pounds or something, right? Yeah, 76 I believe. And it's like a soft shelled wedge tent. Yes. And you think it's okay? It's perfect. How's it hold up on the trail when you're driving? Uh, you don't know it's there. Oh man, that's so cool. Yeah, it's so awesome. And this is how you sleep. You sleep with all the windows open you yeah. sleep with like 20 degrees and and you have all the wind not just the windows but the whole thing's unzipped yeah i'm out here to be in the wilderness and uh i take as much of you know these creature comforts away just so i can be in the wilderness so what do you think about like rob and i who run in heaters at night <laughs> uh to each their own i mean you get it gets you guys out here <laughs> i know what you really think though. <laughs>